It is my pleasure to introduce to you our final speaker of the day, although we're not quite through with treats for the day. Um, next up is Kelly Castlin Gaikuten. Kelly is an alumna of Brunel University, having earned one of her graduate degrees here. She is a seasoned educator and has just started her very own nonprofit called Kinrod that we're very excited about, and it is intended to provide educational opportunities for underserved children. So help me welcome Kelly. Kathleen Guy Kooten. I, I have to say this. Okay. Whose son very sweetly came and supported her today. So we're <laughs> delighted he's here too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Dobkins. Let's give all of our presenters another round of applause. What a wonderful program today. It is such an honor and a privilege to be here with you all this afternoon. President Schrader and Dr. Dobkins, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you as well as this wonderful group of women and men about the importance of leading with purpose. In order to have common definitions, let's start with purpose. Purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Each of us have a purpose in life. I want to repeat that again. Each of us have a purpose in life. When we are able to recognize our purpose, the will to live and to carry out that purpose serve as the driving force toward achieving our dreams. Leadership, on the other hand, is defined as the action of leading a group or an organization. When we are on the path toward fulfilling our life's purpose, our leadership abilities become more and more evident to us as well as others resulting in us actually accomplishing more than we had originally imagined. As a 1995 early childhood education graduate, I can personally tell you that my experiences at Brunel helped me to launch my career in education. Although I knew from the time I was six years old that I wanted to become a teacher, which I'll tell you a little bit more about shortly. When I went to Tennessee State University as an undergraduate student, I was discouraged from going into teaching. Many people told me things like, you're not going to make any money. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have heard that before, specifically those of you who are in the School of Education. Study something like business or technology. In the end, I studied psychology with a minor in sociology because of my interest and love for people. As my senior year approached, I realized even more that all I ever wanted to do was teach. Leading with purpose is about believing that you are beautiful and wonderfully made. It is about knowing that your life has meaning and that because of your greatness, the world will be a better place. It's about allowing yourself to be still enough to listen to that quiet voice that is within all of us, that provides direction and perhaps more importantly, to be willing to take the necessary steps that will lead you towards your destiny. It's about recognizing the importance of treating people the way you want to be treated. It's about understanding that life is short making the most of every day because tomorrow is not promised. Leading with purpose is not limited to a certain age or profession. It's about knowing that no matter how old you are or what path you take, there are boundless opportunities for us to stand out as a leader. So what do I mean by that? Earlier I shared with you from the time I was six years old, I wanted to become a teacher. My first grade teacher, Mrs. Davis, sparked this interest in teaching in me. I loved the way Mrs. Davis taught our class and how she made my classmates and I feel each day. I could anticipate a hug from her as I entered the classroom, and I knew that I would be called upon to take a special note to a teacher, or a really special treat was to take something to the front office. One day I asked Mrs. Davis, how do I become a teacher? And she replied, you have to work hard and go to college. I did not realize at that moment, 
but Mrs. Davis was really providing purpose for me wanting to continue to go to school. Because after all, I wanted to be just like her. I had to go to college, and so therefore I kept in my mind that I had to work hard to get there. I never forgot those words. To this day, when I share my story about teaching, I talk about the impact that Ms. Davis had on my life. After graduating from Tennessee State University, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to have my first teaching job as a uh, high school English teacher in Kagoshima, Japan. My primary role was to teach conversational English during the school day, but oftentimes in the evenings I was also teaching at social events. Kagoshima is the most southern part of Japan, and unlike er other areas in Japan, Okinawa and Tokyo was very familiar with foreigners, which that was not the experience in Kagoshima. Those living in Kagoshima did not have the benefit of seeing or interacting with people from other cultures and backgrounds. With this in mind, my students would often ask me questions such as, does your dad look like Bill Cosby? Or, can you play basketball? <laughs> I will never forget the time that I was walking to catch the train to go to work, and I noticed an elderly lady walking directly in my path. And as she approached me, she stared at my face, and I looked at hers. Then I noticed her hand slowly approaching my face. I leaned in and allowed her to touch me. It was obvious to me that she had never seen an African-American woman, or person for that matter. After these experiences, I soon realized that although it was difficult for me to be so far away from home and from my family, I had a greater purpose for being there. It was not only to teach English lessons, but it was also to introduce my culture and to break down stereotypes. When I returned to the States, my first teaching job was teaching first grade, my dream job. After all, it was as a first grader that I discovered my love for teaching. Knowing the influence that Mrs. Davis had on my life, it was so very important to me to make sure that every child was given the opportunity to support and the support that he and she deserved to reach their full potential. I enjoyed small group instruction, Fun Fridays, which was often the culmination of a unit with games and other activities. Community meetings, a time for me to have group conversations with my kids. And of course, the ongoing hugs that one can expect that when you are working with young children. I loved every single minute. Even on difficult days, there would be times when something would remind me of the impact that I had on a child's life and that I wanted to be in this profession because I knew that I could make a positive difference in the world. Thus, I approached every day consciously or unconsciously with this desire. After teaching first grade for about three years, I was asked to go to third grade and to serve as the grade level chairperson. This was my first introduction to leadership. I vividly recall my first team meeting, which was with a veteran staff. One of my colleagues looked at me and said, what can you tell me? <laughs> I've been teaching for more than 20 years. I remember validating her point of being a veteran and replying, I am only here because I have a job to do. After teaching for seven years, I started my administrative path and have worked in various capacities from assistant principal to most recently school superintendent. I can truly tell you that although my job titles have changed through the years, I have never lost sight of the teacher within me and the, des and the desire to make a positive difference in the world. It is with this keen awareness that has allowed me to lead with purpose during the challenges as well as, as, well as the successes in life. In other words, as you continue on your path toward fulfilling your purpose, as life would have it, there will be some good and bad times, both personally and professionally. I would like to share with you some of the personal and professional experiences that I have had in 1999, 2000, and 2016 that has greatly impacted my life. 
I will warn you that there may be some tear jerkers, but I assure you that there will be some good news. Personally, in February 1999, my husband Rodney and I had a beautiful baby girl, and her name was Kennedy. Kennedy was born with a genesis of the corpus callosum, a rare birth defect known as ACC. ACC is the fibers between the left and the right brain that causes communication, and Kennedy lacked these fibers. Her prognosis was that she could function fine, or she could be dependent on my husband and I for the rest of her life. You just have to wait and see what she shows you she can do, the doctors told us. Well, the teacher in me sprung into action, and I learned how to take care of her. I read about everything I could about ACC. I contacted other parents of children who had also had the same diagnosis, and I organized meetings with doctors to learn more about her care. And honestly, as her mom, I communicated what I felt needed to be done to help her to thrive. My purpose was to make sure Kennedy had every chance to do well. She was hospitalized the first few months of her life, but because I learned how to take care of her, doctors allowed me to take her home. Her home nursery looked very much like a hospital room. A heart monitor was there, a feeding machine, oxygen tanks, and more. These things did not matter. Every day, she and I had our time together to help her to get stronger and healthier. In October, five days just before she was to turn eight months old, Kennedy unexpectedly passed away. The next year, in December of 2000, Rodney, my husband, was working as a hotel manager at a business class hotel that had only been open for about six months. He was at work one evening preparing for an audit that was to take place the very next day. At approximately 10.30 p.m., he heard a commotion at the front counter and he left his office to see what was going on. He discovered that the hotel was being robbed and he was shot and killed. I was eight months pregnant at the time with our third child and I had a four-year-old son, Kyle. Quickly, I realized that I had to take care of myself so that I did not cause harm for my unborn baby and so that I could be the mom that I needed to be for Kyle. When Ryan, our baby girl, was born, I, and as a single mom, I knew that my purpose was to make sure that my children saw me as a happy person. In spite of our obstacles, so that I could make sure that I could provide for them in the way that my husband and I had intended. Professionally, in September of 2016, while serving as school superintendent, I was suddenly terminated without cause. Having been through unexpected, painful instances in the past, I knew that it was very important for me to stay focused on my purpose and to continue to do the work that I feel that I've been called to do. Here's the great news. <laughs> Are you with me? Okay. In December of 2016, Kenrod, named after Kennedy and Rodney, was born. It has been established as a nonprofit entity with a mission to provide supplemental education services to pre-kindergarten through grade 12 students in underserved communities. The ability to do this work allows me to support and serve children and their families in the way that I know how. For this reason, I cannot adequately express to you the joy that my heart feels knowing that I am continuing to lead with purpose. Songwriter Paul Jones wrote, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I am grateful to have my son Kyle who is here with me today. He is uh, here from college on spring break. My daughter Ryan could not be here because she is in school today. And I've also been very greatly blessed to have uh, another daughter, Asavia and Zanai, because my husband and I are a blended family. And I have been very blessed to be able to have another wonderful husband. His name is Pedro. And I can't tell you enough how much he has supported me in ways well beyond I can share with you today. One of my favorite authors is Warren Bennis. And he wrote the book on becoming a leader. He speaks about 
Becoming a leader is about bringing all of your experiences, your skills, your gifts into becoming the person you're meant to become. When I think about my life journey, personally and professionally, I realize that everything that I have gone through, the successes and the challenges, have resulted in who I am today. Finally, I want to encourage you, know your purpose, lead with purpose, and as my father once told me, stay on the right side of things. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. The friend who recommended Kelly to me said, Deborah, she's a rock star. I was like, okay, great, I'll take that. But what I would like to say about Kelly, having heard her story is, nevertheless, she persisted. Thank you, Kelly.